What up, y'all? It's Diggity D here on Faux Show, and today we're going to teach you how to clean your 72-pin connector on your old Nintendo. This bad boy over here needs a good cleaning, so uh, I do it once a year as much as I can, and it keeps the improvement and quality of the game system alive, right? So these are very simple steps, and you don't need a lot of tools. So let's go over to our workbench, and uh, wink, wink, we'll show you. All right, so what we got here is very simple shit. I hope my cord can reach this long. Uh -oh. That didn't sound good. I just dropped a mouse. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, that looks like a good enough place to film this. All right, so what we've got here today, the tools you're going to need, we're going to need a Phillips screwdriver with an extension. They come in different way, uh, manufactured ways and uh, stuff like that. So if you have a Phillips, we need that for the case. I think we might need another screwdriver later on. I'm not too sure. I can't remember, but I'll double check. I think mostly the Nintendo is just a uh, regular uh, Phillips uh, screwdriver. And you're going to need rubbing alcohol. I think you can see it there, 100%. Straight proof out the bottom. Now, you're going to need also a needle, very fine needle. I don't know if you can see that, but you're going to need that. That's very important because I think the situation that I have is going to require it. And I got Q-tips. Again, as I say, I'm not a professional. Um, how to do this, but I've just learned it after watching a couple of YouTubes the most effective and efficient way. So let's get at it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way and we're going to start work on this now. So I'm going to grab this again. So the first thing we need to do when we're doing this, I'm just going to move it on the ground here, is we need the console itself, first of all. For me, make sure you don't have any games. I got Mega Man 2 in there. I was trying to play that, and that's when I noticed the problem. I noticed that uh, I was starting to get a little glitchy, laggy, and uh, just every time I power up the system, it would uh, the screen would be distorted. So I know that that means the pins are dirty. So what we're going to do here is the first step you need to do is to flip this and unscrew it. There is about one, two, three, four, five, six screws that we're going to need the extension Phillips on. This guy here, if you guys don't know what your fasteners and hardware is, I'll show you. There's a Phillips, okay. So let's make this legit and rock and roll. And be careful too because uh, some of these screws on these systems are stripped and they're old. So you got to be very careful when you do this. For me, I like to make sure when uh, the screwdriver has fit into the slots of the actual fastener, the screw, I know then that's when I can start unloosening it because uh, you don't want to damage and risk uh, not being able to open this thing again if need to, right? So we're just going to unscrew this. So this may take a few moments, but I think I got one. If all y'all want to fast forward this, I think you might. <laughs> But no, I've been doing this. I've done this a few times already. Uh, I've had to take this apart just for other reasons. Um, it's had some issues along the way because it's an old system. I mean, it's 30 years old or not 30 years old. It's, it's about, what, it's 2016. So it's probably about, God, about whatever, 50 years old plus. So yeah, once you start continuing to loot, uh, Unscrew this. Be also sure, folks, that you don't lose the screws because that's important. Uh, these screws are very small, and I shouldn't be doing them on a uh, walnut floor like this because they'll get very lost. But um, I really shouldn't be doing this, but I don't really have a proper workbench and that camera angle, wink, wink. So, okay. Now, they haven't come out yet, so we're going to shake. There's one. 
One has fallen out. And they're very small. Like I said, they look just like this. Very, very small little uh, electronic fastener screws. So we're going to put this one off to the side here for now. There's two. Sometimes they take a little finesse, but they'll come out. And this should be three if it decides to. There's three. Now we need three more. Uh, one's out. This is this one here on the corner by the power switch is usually pretty tricky. Tricky, and my screwdriver just fell apart. It usually is pretty tricky. Uh, I think you can see it here. This one. Uh, oops, I'll just turn it on for you guys. This one here is very tricky for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why, but it takes a little while to do that. But to get it out sometimes, I don't know why. But anyways, always make sure, too, that you keep your Nintendo systems from a clean, dust-free environment area. Because uh, usually the cartridges are the most likely cause to get them. I've been collecting uh, quite a few, actually, new cartridges in my collection. And... Uh, yeah, if, if they aren't properly maintained or kept, issues can happen like this. But this system's been running great overall. It's a pretty good little system, and it uh, does the trick. So, can't seem to get that one out, though. out. That one's still in. This one has got to come out. There, this one was really tight. Wow. I don't know why this one didn't come out before. Got that one. There's four. Oh, <laughs> it was actually the other one on the other side there, just loosened up. I think I know what the problem is here already. I think this one. Hmm. That is strange. I don't know why that one's not coming out usually does. I might have to get a different size screwdriver, so we're going to have to take an intermission here on this, I think. Uh, this one here. I don't know if she's stripped or why she's not coming out, but oh, there we go. So I just need one more, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be right back, and I just got to grab another uh, screwdriver here. I'll be right back. So I figured out the problem why that last screw didn't come out, ladies and gentlemen, and it is because my extension, the diameter, is a little too thick to get in this hole over here. Oops. Uh, oh, over here, sorry. Uh, so what we have to do is I have to use a smaller diameter of a, a screwdriver, and it should, I know this one's tricky, but it should just loosen up just like this, which it is. 
perfect. I think it should come out just like that. I know that one's a bit hard. So now, okay, we've got the we've got the the actual cover. That's this part here. Now, da 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 da. da it'll come right off. If you see any uh, scrapes or anything like that, just try to clean it up. Uh, I mean, like I say, I keep pretty well good maintenance of mine. I don't see a drop or a scratch or anything on it, so it's all good. Everything uh, seems to be in working order. So we'll just put the case off to the side. Little tip, what I like to do is I like to, uh, actually I like to keep all the screws and everything else together. I like to make sure that uh, all the screws for whatever slots, because there's going to be a whole bunch of different screws that come in different sizes and shapes, and you don't want to put the wrong ones back in the wrong spots because it's going to be messy. All right, so we toss these ones, the ones we just took out of the shell casing, in here. Now, this is what we have on the inside. A big, 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 big mess. So... What we're going to do is that this this here is where the game obviously loads in. This is the shell casing to protect it. It's actually aluminum. It's very light. And inside is a whole bunch of diode, circuitry, and different things like that. So the next step you're wondering is what do we do next? Well, what we need to do is we need to unscrew these screws. I think you can see they're, they're, they're brass screws. There's one here. There's one here. And yeah, there's a total of, if you really look, if when as you're taking apart your system, there is a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's a total of 10 screws you need to take out. And I'll show you specifically where each one is. Because it is a little tricky, and this is a video, and I like to go slow and explain uh, all, the, all the instructions, because people, whatever, you know, got different ways of interpreting things, so... Uh, I always like to keep it uh, trio and real, so let's get started. This case here, uh, we're going to start on this side. So again, if you're following along, start on this side where the power switch uh, turns on, where the LED flickers uh, a light on your Nintendo. So we're going to take those screws out next. And remember, just be careful. Make sure that the actual screwdriver is slotted inside the slots of the fastener, the screw, because uh, you don't want to be stripping these screws and having to find a store that sells them. It's it's really annoying. Like it's really uh, a headache more than anything. You'd have to go to a hobby shop or a flea market to find the rest of these screws, which is pretty impossible to do, I must say. So as we unscrew these, as I'm attempting to do, that one was pretty tight actually. I guess I don't know my own strength. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Now we did the ones on the side. We did the ones on the side of the switch. If we flip the system 180, we can see that there's one and two. These ones we need to take out now. So let's take them out. Now, okay, I'm unscrewing the last two screws I showed you because this is important. Uh, a lot of people are probably, when they do this, try to rip out their casing. And aluminum is a very soft alloy. It's a very soft metal. So, uh, there's two screws right by the uh, uh, auto jacks here for the, or sorry, I should say, by the uh, adapter outlet and by the uh, RF switch uh, outlet. There's two screws. There's one right there, and there's another one right there, and right here where my screwdriver is pointing to. So there's three there we need to get rid of in order to get this case out, I believe. 
Uh, uh, actually, let me just see something here. I thought it was those you need to take out in order to get in there. I guess I'm wrong. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, so phase that out. Let's get to this part here. So there's these ones when we flip the system this way, we've got to take out. This one's still up. Hmm. I had a screw that was kind of partially up. I don't know why. I guess I didn't tighten it. I forgot to tighten it down or something. That's weird. So now this is very important too. This I know for a fact. This aluminum case only comes out one way. It'll only come out one way. So what you want to do is you want to be able you want to be able to uh, slide this out it's gonna slide out just like that okay ladies and gentlemen so slide so here's the front of the system just slide it carefully out in front of you so that you know you're not damaging or scratching the circuitry or anything like that and uh, we're gonna put this off to the side always make sure that this is clean too. make sure there's no dust or anything like that so it's very important because if that happens and there's an issue with the system, more dust collects and there's more issue. Again, always take care of your games. Like here's Mega Man 2. Um, this is just a classic game and why destroy it, right? Always make sure that you take Q-tips. Some people I've seen use erasers and different things like that. I'll teach you guys in a while how to clean the circuitry. But uh, yeah, this is pretty bad. Uh, uh, you know, well, not this game, but it can get pretty bad if there's dirt and other stuff that gets on the circuitry. Uh, if I'm saying that correctly, of the game. But we'll get into that in, in, in this video in a little while. But okay, so now the metal case is off. So again, common sense, take the screws that we just unscrewed for that and put them together like so. So there should be, again, a total, because I made a mistake earlier, there should be a total of four, five, six, seven screws. Okay, and make sure you don't step on that metal aluminum case because that would be not very good. And already, I see a problem. I see a very bad problem. There is, if I can show you guys, my wife, her hair is always falling out like crazy, but I can see, I don't know if the camera angle can see or not. I'll try to get in some light here. But right over here, that is pretty hard to see. Uh, let's see if I can get this. I, it's pretty hard to see, but I'll try my best here. There is a big, big hair caught right here. Big hair caught right there. It's uh, my wife's, I guess. Oh, it, there it is. I just pulled it out, actually. So that may, be, may have caused the reason why when I was trying to play Mega Man, here it is. I don't know if you can see very carefully, but part of uh, my wife's hair, or maybe even my hair, I'm not too sure, that was caught into the uh, game system. But anyways, um, so now the next step we got here is, here is the case to load it and unload it. Now this is very important. I'm going to tell you guys a story quick. First time I took this apart, this is very important. These screws that are right over here, if you tighten this black case too hard, what happens is, is that uh, the case, if you have it down or up, regardless, it'll either not, it'll just, you, you can't get it to stick, or, or the issue is, is that it, if it's down like this, it won't come back up. Or if it does, it, it just comes back up and will never stick down. So always make sure that there's proper tension. You'll The best way to learn is that you'll feel it. You'll be able to feel uh, just by yourselves and be like, well, okay, uh, obviously I tightened it too much because it's stuck or it's not coming up, right? So, okay, so now 
what we need to do is take these screws out. And I will go step by step. So again, here's the front of the system. We're going to go on my side here and unscrew this. There's approximately two screws, or three screws. Now here's the important thing to remember. On the case, this is very, very important. There's two different types of screws I'm going to show you. So for instance, you have a brass one and you have one that's either uh, uh, aluminum or, or some sort of metal, steel or something, galvanized steel uh, fastener. Now the brass one goes with, the, uh, with, with, the, with its own type. This one here, there's a, I don't know if you can see deep, 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 deep inside, but there is, there actually is a piece of plastic that the silver one, or galvanized I call it, uh, screw, it, 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 this one uh, holds the case, holds the circuitry, and it goes into a plastic uh, casing. I'm not too sure if I can actually show you that. Oh yeah, it's right there, right where my screwdriver is hitting. Uh, that is pretty hard. There, it's right there. I think, right, yeah, my screwdriver is touching it. But it's actually right here. Pretty hard to see. I don't have the best camera. Remember, we're working on a ghetto budget here, right? So, you know what I mean? We got to work with what we got. We're hustling. So, anyways, let's get this back started together here, okay? So, um, what we're going to do is we got to make sure always, again, to keep the, the galvanized or the steel one together in its spot. So here's the trick that I do, I'll show you. So again, we're starting at the front of the system, uh, turn it to the right so that it's it's more or less the end of the plastic here, it's just whatever, you know? Okay, so turn it this way. So as we turn each screw, we're gonna keep it in the same spot. We're gonna make sure that we don't lose the screws and that it's kept in the same uh, hole that it's meant for and it's specifically designed for. So, oh hey hon, that's my wife Sarah. Do you want to say hi to the camera? Yeah, because, anyways, okay. So, as we unscrew this, we want to make sure that this is, I don't know why this one's so tight. Must have tightened this a little too hard. So, we got that one unscrewed. So I've got the screws now, as you can see on the floor. Each one that came out on each side, I have it positioned. So now we're gonna flip the system, and we're gonna get, there's only three more that we gotta take out. So again, the same order of operation. That one's pretty, that was all pretty easy. And now, as we unscrew this, it should, well, that one's pretty, The screw is being really difficult and narcissistic. There. All right, so now the screw cases for this are all taken out and all complete. So now carefully, without scratching the circuitry, if you lift it up a bit on an angle and just slide it out carefully, 
it'll come right out. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure so we don't lose the screws, we're going to put each screw uh, back together where it originally came from. And always remember that the silver one, these galvanized steel ones go in these holes here. So here's the front of the case, right? So they go in the second last hole from the front. Mm, okay. Alright, so. Dropped a screw. All right, so now we've got this. All right, so I see another, now we're at the, uh, the part where the circuitry, it can come out, but um, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, one sec here. Um, Oh, we do have to take out two more screws. Remember the ones I screwed up originally that I was telling you to take out with the aluminum casing? We gotta take out these screws in order to slide out the circuitry. Now, before I continue though, here is my uh, 72 pin connector. Looks a little dirty and it looks like it could use a good cleanup. So what we're gonna do is, like I say, give her a good cleaning and we'll get all of our tool, other tools ready and we'll start cleaning this up. But so far, a few little hairs. Make sure you clean those out too because that could cause issues with the system. Uh, my wife, like I said, she sheds hair and so do I sometimes. But uh, there seems to be quite a bit of hair in this. And it's always important to try to keep your systems in best condition. I, I This is my area where I usually play it. It's fairly clean, but I guess we missed a few spots vacuuming. So I'm just going to clean out some of these hairs quickly because it's... There's a few hairs in here for some reason, which they shouldn't be in here. Um, ooh, and it is pretty dusty inside too. There's a piece of dust floating right in front of me. It is pretty dusty inside this, so we're going to have to give her a good cleaning. And again, I do this once a year, but it's just, uh, she needs it pretty bad. can't believe how much dust she collected this year. Wow. So again, as we unscrew this, always keep your screws together, which I have done over here, as you can see. Now, very carefully, very, very carefully. Oh, that wasn't very careful. Uh, okay, very carefully, because if you drag, oops, if you drag the, the 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 circuitry around, you can screw up and break wires and solder, and it's it's not a good thing. The soldering they did on this was fair, but I think I could do better as a welder. Some of you look like the dog's breakfast, but that's just me. So, if I can just get the screw out, I got them. And then these two screws go to the circuit board, so we'll put them off to the side. Now, this is very important. Try not to put your fingers on the circuitry. Our main goal is to get this piece out. It'll slide out because we took out the screws, and I'll show you what I mean. Be careful for these. These you don't want to damage and bend up. I remember my case is a little warped. As you can see here, I'm pushing it down because uh, Mother Nature, right? Just, you know, wear and tear and things like that. So we got to be very careful with this. It's very important. Oh, and I just found another piece of hair or dust. I want to get out of there before we continue. <sighs> So, yeah, this thing's pretty dusty. It needs a good cleaning. And I don't know what this is, but this is a piece of dirt that's on top of here. And just flick that off. 
So now what we want to do is we want to slide this off very, very slowly and carefully. And oh yeah, the bottom of this is pretty dusty. Um, yeah, the bottom of the tray, as you can see here, is very, very dusty, dusty, dusty. So and I've got a phone call. Wonderful. Um, so we're going to put this down for a sec. Oh, of course, it's just advertisement. Oh, how can we rip you off today with your new cell phone? Blah, 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 blah. You know, that kind of crap. So anyways, as we continue here. Um, so yeah, now this is important. There's a tray underneath here. You want to make sure that this is kept together and aligned. Okay? And I should be showing you this. So you want to make sure that this tray is kept aligned and everything else. Um... Uh, what else do we need to focus on? Let's let's clean the bottom quickly first, um, because I don't want any dust being blown up top uh, on my uh, my 72 pin connector. <sighs> oh, that is it. really dusty. I'm gonna get a wet cloth here. I'll be right back. So what we're gonna do in this situation, because this is just extremely extremely dirty, I have well I had uh, paper towels which are over here. And just ever so carefully, very, very carefully, I'm going to take one paper towel. I've got it a little too wet, so I'm gonna take it and just kind of drain it off onto another one. That should be perfect. And try very, very hard now. This is very important. Try not to get any of the circuitry wet on this because, again, I'm not an electrician, but I do know when you weld on water, it ain't pretty. So, very carefully, try to get, if there's dust underneath this, just try to wipe it clean. It's not recommended either that, either that you should be using a wet paper towel, but this has just gotten really dirty. And I don't know why or how, but it is pretty bad. Yeah, this is already becoming a little bit black. Not too, too dirty, but dirty enough. I should be keeping a better eye on this. Yeah, it's starting to turn a little brown here, or a little black, I should say, blackish gray. As we carefully, carefully clean this. Yeah. Now you can see a little bit of it. Not too sure if the camera can get that, but it's a little black. You can see some black marks on it, some grayish black uh, dirt marks on it, whatever. So just take a little moist paper towel, clean it up, and... Should be good to go. And there was a little spot there. Nice. Okay, so that's roughly cleaned up. Now we want to get to the 72 pin connector. That's the biggest agenda of what we're trying to accomplish. We want to make sure that our games load up 100% all the time. So what we're going to have to do is this here, if you do it very carefully, my my suggestion to, suggestion to you is in order to take this off, mine is a little bit tricky to take off. What you want to do is you want to be able to um, take this, oops, take the metal casing from underneath, just let it go with your fingers because it will get caught. Now, um, quickly, just by the edge of your fingers, I'm going to show you. So now you have the circuitry suspended in midair. Kind of just push it out, just kind of with your fingers. Try not to smudge up too much things here. I know it's a little bit tricky. But uh, I've seen some people's 72 pin connector come off easily. Mine, unfortunately, is a bit different because for whatever reason, the board is warped really bad. And I don't think I'm going to get off easy today doing this. So, uh, I 
Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get off easy doing this. This is, oh, there we go. A little bit tricky. Again, try to make sure as much as you can not to touch the circuitry because that's important. And I almost got her. I almost have her. Almost. Just got to slide it off. I almost have her. Got it. So now I finally, this is what the 72 pin connector, this is what your games load into. And I can see a few problems already. The back of this needs to be cleaned up a little bit better. It's a little dusty and dirty and it's got some uh, issues of dust. Another problem I see is I told you guys I had brought a needle and I exactly see one big, big, big problem here. These are called the pins up front here. And in order, sometimes after wear and tear for so many years, the pins can be pushed down and then it doesn't make contact with the, the, the game system, right? So what's important is, is that you want to make sure all the pins are up. So first off, let's, uh, let's, I mean, it looks overall actually pretty clean. I'm surprised, but it's a little bit of wear and tear. So what we want to do now uh, is we want to grab, I should actually put this on a paper towel. So make sure that, yeah, your, your 72 pin connector is far away from all this stuff here. And let's just, yeah, let's, let's get our, 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 our uh, cleaning supplies and everything else ready here. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this on top of here. Now, again, I'm using peroxide and a lot of people are going to be like, Oh my God, that's bad. Well, different people, you can use brass cleaner and different things like that. For me, uh, I've, I've always used uh, hydrogen, per, hydrogen peroxide because it's been in my house uh, all the time, you know, the extra drink. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no, it, it's been here for a while, and uh, I always use it just for whatever emergencies. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I always recommend using it to clean your Nintendo. I shouldn't say recommend, but it's just my opinion. That's all. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, this uh, I'm going to take this Q-tip and I'm going to dip it inside. Oh, it's a brand new bottle. Okay. One second. Let's just go with this. Okay, so now I'm going to take my tooth Q-tip and we're going to gently, very, very, very gently. So we're going to go like this, bloop, and it's try to make sure it's not soaking wet. Try to make sure that it's just moist enough that. Uh, you know, you can get a little bit on this. Um, and again, this is my method of using, I, I'm not a big fan either of using uh, uh, nitro, uh, 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 peroxide, but uh, it's one of those things when you're in the ghetto and you're on a budget, you got to do. So what I, first of all, what I want to do is I want to clean this because this looks pretty rough. So just going to wipe a little bit of excess off here. We're going to just go like this very lightly. Oops. Very, very lightly, we're just going to clean this and go vertically of the pins so that no hairs or nothing like that gets trapped. So you want to just go very, very lightly on the pins and everything else here. Just lightly enough. Should be going vertical here so that everything's all... And then take the other end of the tooth uh, Q-tip that wasn't... Oops, it wasn't like that and kind of just dry her off. Should be okay. This is actually surprisingly very clean. Now, before we get into this, uh, I see some of my pins are not up. They are down a little bit. So what we're going to do 
And this is very tricky. I don't know if I can show you with the camera, but what we're going to try to do is we're going to take our pin and we're going to try to flip these up. As you can see, some of these, yeah, this isn't, uh, some of these pins, oh, there's one here that's kind of bent actually, and I think I can get to them. Here's one that we don't want. You want the pins equally spaced all over. Um, I don't know if I can get to this one, but I'll try my damnedest, but it's pretty badly bent. And these things, again, bend because you're putting in the game or other people are stupid and they don't know how to put it in, vice versa. So you want to make sure that these pins are in here correctly. So again, we're going to take a, a needle, a regular, regular sewing needle, and we're going to push that up if we can. But here's the biggest project we got to do. These are the pins all along here. So as you can see, if you, I don't know if you can notice, but there's some that are really, really up strong. There's some that are really, really down. So we're going to get the ones that are really, really down, okay? So I know it's not the best quality, but anyways, I'll show you one here. I just want to fix one that I see that's pretty bad, actually. Um, There. You want to just very, very finely and very, very carefully flick these up. So here's one that's a little bit down. I'm going to show you. So you always want to make sure that these pins are up, right? So here's one that's a little down. We're going to, if I can, take the needle. And just lift up. See, that's a little bit better. You see how this one, as long as you have them totally up as much as you can, that's what gives a good connection to the game to make it loaded up quicker, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure ooh, there is a bit of dust on this. I should grab my Q-tip and clean that because that's pretty bad. Maybe I can get it with the needle. And I just put the needle in a carpet. I put the needle on the carpet. I'm going to step on a needle here. Yikes, this is, oh, here it is. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Okay, that wasn't the brightest move, but okay. Um, so we're going to get rid of this shit here. And again, so here's the pins, right? We're going to just lick them up, the ones that are really down. And it's very tricky sometimes, but, and try also not to make sure that you're, your pins get broken or anything like that. It's really difficult doing this. And it is a challenge every time. Especially that pin. I don't have the strongest needle either. There.
So we're gonna pull each one up as I'm doing. Takes a while too. But I really want to get this one that's damaged a little bit. I want to lift it up. one was a little bit tricky but I think I got her yeah I think I did and again these things are uh, they're pretty old so There. One's a little down too. And I think that's pretty well good. The the surprisingly these these aren't uh, too dirty at all either. I'm kind of amazed actually. I thought we'd have to clean a lot more, but here it is. The system is other than a few pins, a few hairs, I mean <laughs> Looks pretty damn clean to me. I don't see any uh, issues or anything like that. So now here's the important part because this thing can be put installed back upside down. So we want to make sure that we have this in the right way. So as you can see here, the little wings like this, this, this part here goes into the back of the system, okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to do the step-by-step -step again. So we're going to go like this. And we're gonna go put it slide it right back in there. Another thing we should do too is where my finger where my finger is, this should be clean too. Uh, if it's dirty, just take again a q-tip. Uh, where is my lucky q-tip? Well that doesn't matter. Just dip one in there as we clean this up. And just give her a good wipe. Let's see. Uh, I can't tell. Just tiny little swipes. Uh, a few little pieces of dirt. Yeah, it does have some dirt on it. Hmm. So let's give her a good clean. And underneath too is important. It's, man, it's a hot summer today in uh, Canada. One sec. So we're going to put this in a clean, safe area. And then we're going to take this. And you can see here on my... There's some tiny black dots. There's one right there. I can see it. So we're going to just, like I say, swipe this and clean it. Very good. We're just going to clean this. Yeah, there is a little bit of dirt. A few more pieces, and we're going to clean underneath. Ooh, that was a nice big black blotch there. Oh yeah, All right. clean that puppy really good. A few little dirt spots from whatever or however it got there. Now you take the opposite end and dry it off. You don't want that shit sitting there. Remember, just hold lightly. Don't put your fingers all over the circuitry because it's a mess. So as we dry that off, there we go. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we want to put the 72 pin connector back because it can be put in backwards, right? Or upside down or whatever. But the best way to do this and the way I've always learned is, like I said, have this part facing at the back of it. And you know already that I've shown you these are the pins. Uh, these things that are sticking up are the pins. So again, so what we want to do is we want to 
uh, slide this in and the holes will match up too, eh? The holes, you can tell, A, first of all, the ones that were galvanized steel, I can already see those those uh, holes drilled in the 72 pin connector plastic are bigger. So we're going to carefully, oops, we're going to carefully, carefully slide this in now, which is really, really difficult because my circuit board is very warped bad. So it's going to take a little bit of some wiggling, but I know we can do it. God. hardest I've ever had to put this in. There we go. There. And we make sure that it's really in there. The holes are aligned with the circuitry. I think it's pretty damn on there. I don't know why. That took some extra pushing. Well, that case is pretty damn snug in there now. It ain't going to move. So again, now we take this casing and see how, for instance, there's this, 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 this piece here. Uh, align it up with the uh, inside of this casing. Make sure everything's pushed down. Watch out for wires, as I was uh, talking about before. Watch out you don't damage any of these wires because I got my case is warped. So always be careful of your stuff. Like it, it's, yeah, it's very important. Uh, you don't want to damage these uh, fine pieces of equipment and machinery. Now, uh, Okay, now, as you can see inside, the holes will match up in a line. There's even little plastic pins, which I'll show you in a second, uh, help you line up the casing and everything so you don't mix and match up uh, what you've got. Now, make sure that, yeah, none of these wires, nothing here is, is, is going to affect or crush, never, you know, break down or, or crush wires and things like that and it actually just plopped in there quite nicely wow I got a little bit of a treat on that so uh, as I just quickly look here you want to make sure that it's sitting in there flush and aligned and this looks pretty damn good considering like that actually went in there beautifully so here we go we got it back in there um, I just want to make sure of something though because I think if it's sitting if it's sitting up on an angle or something doesn't seem right make sure you readjust it all the time because you don't want to be damaging or sitting on wires as you put this down and it is annoying to get this back and in, into here I, I do understand people get frustrated all the time with this uh, lengthy process but as I can see I have it incorrectly and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw it back together so now what we're gonna do is the first step we unscrewed this side here Oh, sorry, we unscrewed the two screws, one, two here, so we're going to put those back in together.
Okay, and let's grab that other screw. Where is the other screw? I just seen it. Uh oh, don't tell me I lost one of the screws here. And I did. Crap. This isn't good. I lost one of the screws for this already. That's important to screw it back together. Um, let's see. What? There were seven in this. Three, five, six, seven. Yeah, I am missing a screw. This is not good. Now, oh, I shouldn't have been doing this on a shag carpet. That's my own mistake. Oh, found it. Perfect. Always make sure you have it clean. It's like welding or woodworking or anything. Always make sure your environment's clean. I'm doing it the ghetto style, so should have been a little bit more careful with this. But um, again, make sure your work area is always clean, especially for this type of stuff. I can't stress it enough because uh, um, the equipment is so old. It... Uh, it's, you know, aged and whatever, right? So make sure that uh, everything is, is, is in respect according, accordingly to its rightful uh, area. And I think, I think I made a mistake here putting this back in. I, I see something on the outside that's not aligned properly. So I think I got some wires. I'm sitting on that aren't proper. Yeah, I do see something. Okay, so now I see the problem. I actually almost installed this with some wires attached underneath here. I want to make sure that everything is pushed up accordingly. So that line's up there, that's in there, that's in there, that's yeah, that's dead on. Again, this system's a little funny. Uh, this was actually my sister's from a long time ago. And for whatever reason, I don't know what happened, but it's... One second. It's always had a problem here getting reconnected. It's always had an issue of... of being pushed back to where it should be originally. I don't want to give too much stress. There. I wonder if that would make a difference now. I actually just Push these wires down a little bit and they fit in. Nice. Okay, so now that I've done that, all right, let's put this back in. Okay, and again, always watch, make sure that the screws are not butting up against anything, and make sure that everything, oops, is in contact. Uh, yeah, OK. 
Okay. All right, so let's do this now. Let's get this back and running here. There. That's right, okay. Okay. Oops. Now, a little technical difficulties here. My screensaver popped up. Okay, we're okay. So anyways, getting back to this. So yeah, make sure wires, everything's lined up. There's little plastic pegs with different holes for you to line the system up so you can't screw it up. It's pretty virtually impossible. So this should be complete. Now where's that other screw? Let's get that bastard in here. Yeah, right in there. Get him right in there. Sometimes these old systems are pretty pretty tricky to put back together, I should say. These ones you can tighten down uh, pretty snugly because these belong to the inside of your power source, which is your nether long hair. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So there's those two. Now, here's the tricky part. We need to take this case and we need to slide it back in. So we know that this is the front of the case. What we need to do is we need to first take these screws out because we don't want to scratch the cart, the circuitry. So I'll get this back down here. Um, okay. So we'll take our screws out. We know where they need to be aligned. As we take this out, okay. Now we're gonna slide the plastic case. So this is the front, okay. And I remember I was telling you when you tighten this in to make sure that the screws aren't too tight, and I'll show you why. So we slide that in carefully, and it fit in there just like butter. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to make sure. We'll just put always put in the silver ones first, the galvanized ones. That's what I would do. So again, here's our system. I would personally put them in the second slot over here, if you can see. And I just dropped it in there. That wasn't smart, but I got it. Um, so we need to just make sure that this is pushed in there correctly. Drop our screws in. There's one. And there's two. Now you gotta make sure it's in there tight. And why is that not screwing in there?
Oh, actually. Yeah, that is correct. Um, but let's put, let's drop all the screws in here. Just to make sure that we got a good fit. Okay, yeah, that's right in there. That's perfect. That's where the money needs to go. It's right there. And then this can fit into here like so. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and then the last one I can see goes in there. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to carefully tighten these in here. And what I do, oops, I got a bad angle. What I do is I just normally go corner to corner trying to square it up and make sure, let's make sure that this is pushed in. Yeah, the holes will help you line it up, but just to make sure that everything is in there nice and tight, which it is. I'm gonna line this up. And slowly, ever so slowly, put this all back together. Okay, so we're gonna tighten this up however it goes in, like that, yeah. There we go. Let's get those galvanized ones in there. And always test, as you're tightening them, just make sure. Just do the test because if it's too overly tight, it's gonna close and stick on you forever or it'll just never lock in place. I think it's because what happens is if it's tightened too much, the springs that are over here, they bind. These, spr these springs where my finger is, they bind. So I think what happens is if it's locked in place already or not, it, uh, it just kind of locks itself into place because there's too much pressure from the screws. Perfect. Let's screw this guy in. that in that's good let's put this puppy in well that one's a little tricky to put in for some reason huh why that would that be so difficult Oh, there she goes. I don't know what happened there. Anyways, so she's in now. Okay, now let's just test a couple times. Still, to me, it feels a little sticky. So we're going to just uh, check to make sure we didn't tighten. That one's okay. Tighten too many things a little too hard here. We don't, And you don't want it too loose either. Because otherwise, uh, a little sticky, I think, right over here. And there you go. Now we got our case back in. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take our aluminum case, which is this guy here, right, with our seven screws, and we need to put all this back together. Now this is important because you want to make sure and if also another thing too, before I forget, let's just test. Let's just see if we put the game in the 72 pin connector incorrectly. Just because you can just go like this. And there you go. We well, you know we did good. Blue and tailspin uh, fit in there nice and perfect. So now um, what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to take that out. Uh, we're going to now put the aluminum case on, which is exactly what we want to do. So we're going to 
There's that. Yeah, we're going to make sure everything lines up here. Uh, something isn't. I don't know why. Oh, I see the problem. I see exactly what the problem is here. There we go. Uh, it's because this is catching here. I can show you guys in a second. Yeah. So. Yeah. Make sure when you guys install this again. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, make sure it always lines up with the plastic little tabs. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but see in between the two screw holes, there's a little knob. Like I say, that's one of your plastic little guides to help you assemble back your system. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, where did I put the screws now? Uh-oh. Yikes. This isn't good. Uh, where did I put the screws? Full show already on his drink, apparently. Uh. Where did I put those screws? Uh, losing screws left and right there. Uh, where did I put those screws? Screws, screws, screws. Where did you go? Oh, here's one. Oh, here they are. I don't know why I keep throwing in the carpet. There's three, four, five, six. I'm missing one. Oh, I'm missing one again. Yeah, we're missing one. That's not good. Uh, oh, I think I feel it. Toenail. Crap. That's not it at all. We need seven. There were seven of those screws, and we're missing one. No, it didn't roll under the carpet. There's seven screws, and I'm... Oh, bingo, found them. All right, got them. Now, so what the next step we need to do is to screw the case. Again, we've already got this like that. And we're going to take this, take these screws, and screw it back in together, the metal case. So again, just drop the screws into the holes, like so. I'm going to do this one first because I see an issue. Yeah. Got the bastard to get in there. No, that one was bad. I don't know why. Again, these aluminum cases are so warped. So I don't know why 
in these casings, they give more headaches and hassle than what they're worth. Yeah, it's slipping and sliding all around here. I bet you are a bastard. And now, got this in here. And I get, again, not too, too tight. A little loose it can be. Not too, too tight. You don't want to be too tight bending the, the metal and breaking things around here now. Let's put that back in there like so. Screw it in. Like so. Playing with that front loader like that. Okay. As we. I got one more. There we go. So we got everything in there. That's perfect. Oop, this one's a little bit up. Let's tighten him down. You want to make sure that this aluminum casing is tightened because it's going to help you stop getting dust inside your Nintendo, right? Yeah, puppy is in there too. And this guy can go down a tiny bit more. I think he can too. That's good. All right, so our case is on. Now, the final finale. We're going to put on the actual Nintendo case here. What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> okay, so let's do this. All right, so we got how many here? Four, five, and there's six. Yeah. So we got all of our six screws here. We ain't going to lose. So now, give one more little final coating there. Case back on top of it like so. Okay. Now just flip it upside down like this. You can even put it on a hard surface like that. And yeah, everything's good in the hood here. So let's start screwing it back in. We need our extension now. Um, 
But you know what? Let's do this one here since it's already since it's already here. The one that uh, requires well, the only one that requires oh, it landed right in the hole. Uh, the only one that requires uh, a regular Phillips screwdriver. Okay. Now we got that tight. Let's pop another screw into here. And I landed right in perfectly. Okay, as we screw this back in. No, my. Pretty hard filming with full show on this, but still managed to keep doing it. Now, let's quickly. We'll test one of my games out after this too. My system has always worked very well. It's uh, it's been a pretty good system to me. It's never really been that badly of an issue. Now, if I can just screw this in. Oh, yeah, here she goes. Almost got it done. That's tight. Use a little bit more tightening. Okay, that's in. I know this one's in. Okay, that's pretty damn tight. This one is should be tight. Okay. That's tight. And this one a little bit more. And that's good, I think. I think it's pretty damn long. OK. 
Okay. Now, let's clean up a game. And let's test this bitch. Word up. Let's try tailspin. Since it's right beside me. So again, I was going to tell you guys how to clean your games. A lot of people, it even says on the back here, if you read, uh, warning, do not use uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol or water or whatever. Well, I've been using Windex and it seems to do the trick. And I've been using Peroxide, it seems to be doing the trick. And I've heard other stories too, but roughly my games are pretty well clean. I'll give you an example of what a dirty one looks like. In my own opinion, I actually think that the old Nintendo gets dirtier than the Super Nintendo. I found that these cartridges, you got to keep very good uh, care and maintenance of. If you can actually find uh, the old school, uh, um, the old school uh, Nintendo cases or whatever, um, yeah, I, I would recommend uh, trying to get a hold of those because they're not too bad to cover the the, the things up, or even if you. Keep them in a dry and 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 and, and dust free uh, environment. It should do pretty good. But as you can see, only a tiny bit of dirt on uh, Tailspin. He's pretty well cleaned. Like, I mean, I keep my games pretty well organized, and the odd bit of dirt, I guess, can happen per se. But uh, no, uh, as long as you clean uh, the video games, and then after once they're cleaned, I would recommend just letting them air dry. And using a dry end of a Q-tip to clean them up too. Let it air dry. It needs time to uh, to dry and relax. And you know, well, not relax, but you know what I mean. Just dry and uh, you know, uh, get a little bit more uh, cleaned up because I mean, like anything, if you don't want to put something wet inside that machine and then it screws up, right? So again, we just go like this. Marble Madness, another one of my favorites. I recently picked this up, actually. I never owned it, but uh, there's a local store in our uh, in our uh, province, and uh, they sell a whole bunch of old school video games, and they're pretty balling. Like, yeah, they rip you off, but I mean, other than that, you sometimes you can find some pretty decent deals there. Like, they're not too bad, and I can't complain myself. I've picked up a few good things there, and I don't even think they knew what the fuck they were worth because there's some games in there that they're selling. They think it's, oh my god, it's so rare and narcissistic. Uh, we're going to try to rip off the average consumer. Well, those are the games you stay away from, right? But if you can find some that are for a fairly good reasonable price, equal to eBay or whatever, get it. So, uh, let's let Tailspin and Marble Madness dry out for a bit. Let's take the Nintendo and just plug it, plug it back to its original spot. So we got it back in the crib here. This is my lab where I have bust rhymes, make Super Nintendo still alive and all that shit. So there we go. Let's put it back. All right. And actually, I think I've got a better idea now. I'm gonna put my old Nintendo on top of the T on top of the coffee table because. I want to make sure it doesn't get in front of any dust. Now let's hook up the controllers again. Ugh. And now, as it's hooked up, we'll clean up some of this mess and we'll test Tailspin and Marvel Madness. And I'll even pick up another game. I can try Mega Man if you want. Or whatever, but uh, that's pretty much how you clean an old Nintendo. A little bit of a lengthy process. I'm not the best at explaining things, and I hope that this video has covered a lot of the details and different things, uh, and maybe you have questions or anything like that. So if you do have any more additional questions, uh, please feel free to email me or uh, to write it in the YouTube uh, comment section, whatever. So uh, I know I've done my job, basically, but... Uh, I'm just going to clean up these tools and then we'll give this Nintendo a shot. One second. That's garbage. I'll leave this here for now. This is garbage.
All right, so tailspin should be pretty well cleaned up. Uh, I don't see any other issues, so let's pop this blue in here and uh, let's see how she turns out. Okay, uh, I need power in here. So as you can see, so far so good. We see the red light is on. That didn't turn out good. Crap. There we go. I didn't have it pushed in far enough. That's all, YouTube. <laughs> Watch this. Could be too a little bit of the peroxide on it. I think I just didn't have it pushed in far enough. Let's do Mega Man 2. What the hell? There we go. Let's get that bad boy in. And there we go. All right, so hit that subscribe, like button, and uh, for now, peace. That was a demo, y'all. <laughs>